Our special guest today is uh, a former FBI agent, a heroin in my eyes, that uh, worked for the FBI for, I believe, for about 24 years. Her name is uh, Colleen Rowley. And we're going to get her in just, just a few moments, but I have something here very important that I have to get off my chest, uh, folks. I uh, I got an email from, uh, of course, my good friend and cohort, James Morris, several days ago, and uh, it is a, uh, a reply from uh, Cindy McCain. Now, this is John McCain's uh, wife, and it says she doesn't care about the Liberty cover-up. But this this really took me aback. It just uh, actually it just uh, brought tears to my eyes when I read it because of the, the callousness of it. Uh, apparently, uh, this is the way she feels. Uh, anyway, I'm going to read this. It's just a short sentence, but uh, it goes like this. Uh, to James Morris, the fact that you continue to talk about my dead father-in-law is incredible. And who she's talking about, of course, is uh, John McCain, uh, dad, uh, the person that was in charge of the uh, Liberty investigation and the cover-up, which ensued. Please, and this is in capital letters, I don't care about this issue. This issue, uh, Mrs. McCain, apparently that you don't care about, is, is 34 dead Americans, or Marines and sailors, and one uh, civilian from the National Security Agency. And I, I just can't understand it. And it goes on. Do you want me to email garbage about your mother and father? Really, James, use your manners. My father-in-law was a four-star admiral of great distinction and a fine man. I loved him deeply. Please leave my family alone. I really realize you hate my husband. Husband, that is your prerogative. Off limits and in very poor taste. James, I've asked and begged a thousand different ways. What really strikes me about this this letter and its uh, uh, is sensitivity is that uh, Mrs. McCain and the senator, they, they have sons in the military. They have a son in the military, a, a Marine, and they have a son in the United States Navy that uh, flies helicopters. And I, I know you care about your sons. Uh, well, what about caring about our sons who were killed aboard the USS Liberty? The, the, only, the only thing I can come up with is because Israel did it. You know, your 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 husband wrote uh, a scathing uh, article, in my view, in a book called "The Liberty Incident," r written by a judge in uh, Florida, A.J. Crystal. He's a bankruptcy judge that refudiates everything that the survivors have said. That it was a, a, a complete and uh, utter disaster, cover up, a deliberate murder of Americans on the high seas.
And for you, uh, Mrs. McCain, uh, I may, perhaps you're not very aware of the issues of the, the Liberty uh, slaughters. But to use, though I don't care about this issue, is a slap in every American space. It's a slap in every man and woman in uniform today. If you do not care about 34 Americans slaughtered by the government of Israel, you certainly don't care about the people, the men and women serving today. And I say that with, with uh, a great respect. And I say that uh, from my heart. Now, perhaps you got the story wrong, or perhaps you don't know the inside story. But uh, I think that you better back up on this one. And I wouldn't bring this out on the air, not unless I knew it was a credible email from a credible person that has the email in his hand, the original email. I've got a copy here. And I want you to go to uh, tinyurl.com slash Cindy McCain email. That's tiny, T-I-N-Y, U-R-L dot com slash Cindy McCain email. Allison had also said at her uh, ifamericansnew.org um, website, you could find Admiral Thomas Mora's um, de de declaration there in the presentation that he'd made in, in D.C. as she'd referred to. But you can also, and actually he was the um, chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff under President Nixon, as we know, and he came sure. out saying that the Liberty attack was definitely um, deliberate. But uh, just to you know, make some more points here, Phil, we also had a Captain Ward Boston, and his declaration can be found by doing a search at ifamericansnew.org as well. But, Phil, with another thing that's incredible is with um, John McCain. You had, you'd mentioned him. Yes, this, this cover-up, as we know, Captain Ward Boston had told me directly, had come down from the highest level of the Johnson presidency, Lyndon Johnson. He came down through Isaac Kidd uh, to him with the Naval Court of Inquiry. The person that had convened the Naval Court of Inquiry was Admiral John McCain, Jr., and that's the father of John McCain, the senator. And you can just look it up on, I just looked it up again this now, on page 175 of John Scott's Excellent Attack on the Liberty Book, and of course John Scott is the uh, son, actually it's James Scott, James Scott's Attack on the Liberty, and he's the son of Liberty Survivor John Scott, and it clearly conveys how Admiral McCain was involved with this cover-up. He had a friend uh, who was uh, the Jewish ambassador for the U.S. to the U.N., they were friendly, and he covered this up for Israel, and it was handed down to John McCain, and John McCain, as you'd mentioned, had uh, whitewashed that sham Naval Court of Inquiry, and we all know it to be a sham, but what Captain Boston had conveyed to me and his declaration out of the facts of the State Department, and I'll leave you with a URL where you can find all this information about John McCain and his father involved with, directly with the Liberty cover-up, and you can go to tinyurl.com forward slash McCain Praises Fathers Whitewash. Again, tinyurl.com forward slash McCain Praises Father's Whitewash, and it's all there to see. And there's another uh, website, um, which is excellent. I don't want to give too many websites here. And it's called, uh, it's titled InvestigateUSSLiberty.com. And, uh, you know, this, this cover-up's gone on far too long. I saw the email that uh, Ron Kukul had forwarded, me, forwarded to me with uh, Pete McCloskey's comments. I think those are grounds right there, Phil, to open up an investigation again. As um, the Israeli ambassador, Michael Oren, had said, at the USS uh, Liberty State Department panel discussion when I faxed uh, James Banford Camps and Boston's declaration uh, you know, a few years ago, and he'd even said that there were grounds, and this was before he was even an Israeli ambassador to the U.S., he'd even said, and it's on the C-SPAN video, there's a record of it, that there are now grounds based on what Captain Boston has conveyed about that sham Naval Court of Inquiry um, to reopen an investigation into the Liberty attack, which in fact never even really happened. It was just a whitewash. And, yeah, well, uh, James, James, I wanted to mention the State Department thing. That was a, that was a biggie. I was there. I was the president of the association at that time, and uh, I was uh, I was not allowed to speak by the moderator, Mr. Susser. And I think you under, I think you remember that uh, yeah, they cut they cut me off at the mic, and and uh, you know um, here I am in my own State Department uh, tr trying to stand up for the crew of the USS Liberty and the men that were murdered that day, and I can't even get a word in edgewise at our own State Department. Now, how deep uh, does it go? It goes to the very uh, depths of our government, and and uh, you know there's one other thing, if you would please, 
uh, James, give out uh, John Gadesco's uh, wonderful website, please. With pleasure, um, Phil. It's tinyurl.com forward slash USS Liberty. He is one of our, uh, I guess, most uh, respected and uh, and honorable uh, men, James Morris. Thanks for taking my call, Phil. I'm very glad that I was able to um, get uh, Colleen Raleigh, a very valued friend of mine. I was on my Facebook friends list as well, and I'm um, very happy to hear her voice on the air, and she's been spot on with her responses as usual. Um, you know, I, I guess the first thing to touch on was the email by Cindy McCain, which I had received that reply that you'd read and touched on earlier. It was just kind of incredible when I received that from her because I know how much she cares about the military. I, I know she is a supporter of the U.S. military. And I know that she has uh, two sons. One was a, a Marine who served in Iraq. And the other son is a, is a helicopter pilot who's currently still in the U.S. Navy. The other son, I think, is going to go back into the Marines as an officer after he finishes college. But uh, the bottom line is she does care about the U.S. military. I had a friendship with her for the past year. Um, but not when it comes to um, Israel murdering and wounding American sailors and Marines, uh, apparently, as you can see in that, uh, that email reply that she sent to me. And I think it probably has something to do with uh, her husband, uh, Senator John McCain, of course, and his father, um, the four-star admiral, who she'd refer to in that email, uh, being involved with the cover-up. I mean, look at what you'd mentioned earlier with uh, A.J. Crystal, the, the Jewish bankruptcy judge in Florida, and how he'd come out with that book, The Liberty Incident, which tried to uh, whitewash the sham naval court of inquiry that uh, John McCain's father had convened um, in association with the cover-up that came down from the highest level of the uh, the Johnson presidency as Captain Ward Boston and he had even told me as well the Navy lawyer who was associated with that uh, court of inquiry there is a website you can go to that talks about how not only John McCain's father but his father as well had uh, been involved with that cover-up and whitewashing that sham naval court of inquiry and that uh, website is tinyurl.com forward slash McCain praises fathers whitewash Yes, you know, this cuts to the heart of, I think, an issue that Americans really need to consider if they don't want to fight this war forever. American uh, lifestyle, uh, democracy, women in the workplace, elections, liberty, all of those things, the Islamists, Al-Qaeda, its allies, would never have in a country that they governed. That's very clear. But the idea that has been pushed by President Clinton and President Bush and Mr. Cheney and, and uh, Barack Obama and Senator McCain, that America is being attacked because of those things is uh, a disservice to the population of the United States. This war is not against Americans because we're Americans. It's, against the act it's, it's motivated by the activities of our government and its allies in the Muslim world. Certainly, Israel is an enormous problem for the United States and an enormous motivator for the Islamists who are active around the world, including in America and Canada and Britain. But it's not only that. It's our support for the Saudi police state. It uh, is our, uh, our, our uh, exploitation of what, at, at low prices, at least as the Islamists consider it, of Middle Eastern oil, of Muslim oil. It's our presence on the Arabian Peninsula and our military activities in Iraq and Afghanistan and Yemen and Somalia and other places. The point is, unless you understand the motivation of your enemy, you are never going to be, under, to be able to understand his durability, his intentions, or his ability to recruit in the coming generations. And that's where we are at the moment. And certainly, you can argue about whether you should support the Israelis or not support the Israelis. That's a perfectly uh, 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 legitimate debate. But when you say that Israel is an enormous burden on U.S. interests and our relationship with the Israelis is getting American soldiers killed overseas and threatening us at home, that's just a fact. You can't get away from that fact. And that's the fact that should form the basis of the conversation about whether we continue or not continue support for Israel.